off to uh, welcome uh, Pete, Peter and Phil and Paul. They all have nicknames, these guys. So, and unmute yourself as well, please, guys. Thank you. Welcome. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Okay. Morning. Still morning in the UK. Fantastic. Yeah. So let's do a quick uh, round uh, with each of you where you just give me your title and um, your name and what you are currently doing. So Paul, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, Paul Frampton Calero. So um, in my past, I used to run the media group of Havas. So was it a big holding company, then went and did a tech startup thing and learned what building things from scratch looks like. So my most recent role um, is running Control versus Exposed, which is a bit of a morph of those two things. So we basically have built a new service company designed to live at the nexus of audience data and technology. So very flexible um, service models to support brands in this new complex world of data and tech platforms, essentially. So you reinvented the advertising industry. Yeah, all on my own, yeah. Fantastic, good to have you here. Fantastic. And Peter, let's uh, jump to you. Yes. So hello, everyone. My name is Peter Sancier. I am currently the Director of Digital Marketing at Go Compare. I've been with Go Compare for about a year. Uh, during that time, being responsible for the digital marketing channels, pay, you know, organic, CRM. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I created or built the internet, but I've been knocking around it for about sort of 18, 19 years. So. <laughs> That's awesome. fantastic so you are also known of the good old days where we could buy affinity and uh, call all the media by phone that was good old days <laughs> fantastic thank you peter pete and phil my good colleague from adform let's jump to you is this a competition to see who's worked in the industry the longest no that because way? i guess you will win be already yeah. phil okay. yeah. all yeah. right so uh phil acted i'm country manager for uk benelux and france or as we call it benefrance france um I, I guess you know i'm kind of responsible for this go-to-market strategy in, in in those markets been in advertising since 2003 um back in the day when overture was a thing and google wasn't the largest search engine and and uh, and Pete and I actually used to work, work together for many years at a full service agency uh, called Big Mouth Media, which is where our kind of relationship started. So, uh, yeah, so now I feel old. <laughs> you're not. You, you still look young and fresh. So, guys, uh, we are here today because uh, we have had a really interesting project going on for quite some time. And it's so rare that the industry does not only share a case but actually findings as well and i'm really happy about what you're going to show today and i believe that a lot of the audience will find it just as interesting as uh, me but pete uh should we start with you and just talk a little bit about like the challenge and your role and how like this whole um, ambitious project uh was started yeah sure um so I guess like many probably on the call listening, uh, you know, my role is looking to acquire new customers and retain the existing ones, right? Um, the industry we work in, uh, you know, insurance, FS, and I guess the subset, uh, which is price comparison websites, is pretty pretty competitive, right? So um, that said, there's probably a fairly understood and tried and tested sort of marketing strategy or sort of above the line, always on, I'm sure some people might even be aware of some of the efforts. Um, and then the bottom of the funnel kind of uh, channels like PPC particularly, where we capture that demand that we sort of, you know, has been generated. Um, now there's nothing wrong with that in itself. It works, you know, it absolutely does. However, it is very costly. You know, we see a lot of competitive pressures uh, on different parts of that funnel, which actually mean, you know, maintaining our margin is a real challenge for us. So one of my goals relatively soon as, you know, about a year or so ago was looking at how do we kind of change the gearing, uh, kind of reduce some of the dependency uh, upon, you know, particular the, the paid search, not necessarily reducing it, just how to reduce that dependency on it. Um, so one way, obviously, is looking at channel diversification and display was one of those channels which naturally stood out to me. I've always been a proponent of using display. Um, but I guess where we were as a business, we weren't, it was of interest to us. We were doing small amounts of work with it. Um, but as ever, or, or frequently the case, uh, there were questions around the value of the, the channel and what it was bringing to the business. So, um, for me, I wanted us to explore using the channel, but wanted to kind of, I guess the first thing was understand and to demonstrate the incremental value of the channel. And to be clear from that perspective, uh, as we set out, we, it was more than the nature of this sort of, you know, this chat, it was more than the clicks, it was the impressions, it was all the activity together. So we needed to find a way that we could actually say, how do we demonstrate that value? And specifically after that, actually also 
develop, I guess, a number of learnings or specific criteria that we could use uh, to target and drive performance and report against. So that was where we were at. And we obviously looked at kind of what our, our current activity was, but we felt we kind of needed to find a partner that could, or partners in this case, that could actually help us facilitate that uh, and get to that, I guess I would call it that start line, to be honest. Fantastic, thank you. Sounds really challenging, but also really interesting. Yeah, yeah. so Philip, uh, how did the Adform initially get involved in this project from Peter? Yeah, so, um, you know, I mentioned before, we've known each other for, for a long time and, and we, you know, we still we still catch up weekly. We, we play in a six side football team together and maybe while football is usually the first thing we talk about, you know, we, we can't help it when you've been in the industry this long that you do still always talk about the industry because it's a great industry to work in. So, you know, Pete explained that he'd gone into this new role. It, it's a brand, um, you know, in the UK that, that is such an exciting brand to sort of, work with because you know that they have this huge amount of budgets on things like TV advertising, but I also kind of knew that there was a bit of an over-reliance on paid search. And um, I, I just felt that we were, we were at the time we were sort of reimagining and re-engineering our end-to-end -end stack, Louise. It was just before we launched it in September with Adform Flow, but I thought there were elements there that stood out that we could help with. So programmatic use cases for prospecting and, and retargeting, you know, are, our guest table stakes and things that everybody can do but it was the other ele elements that I thought was interesting so like having trying to trying to make sense of some audience based optimization when the, the information they have on their audiences is fairly limited um, trying to look at things like dynamic creative to test different types of creative and so on and also how, as Pete said, you know, the, the, the PPC is very much at the lower funnel, how we can sort of widen that funnel and maybe come up the funnel a little bit as well, uh, was just things that I felt Flow was, was a really good fit for. So I think, you know, we sat down with Pete and his team, we worked out the makings of a good test brief. And once we had that, it was then about finding that trusted partner that, that could help execute on this. And, and it, was, it was a pretty short, short list because... Uh, you know, we're talking about a lift test here. We're talking about a control versus exposed test. So you can see where I'm going. I was like, oh, hang on a minute. You know, it was just, it was obviously a natural fit. So the first person we rang was Paul and we said, look, I think this is a great opportunity for us to work together. And, and that's when we introduced these guys who would already become experts in, in using our tech. Fantastic. So Paul, what an introduction. Short list, we called one. <laughs> he nailed it. So one, Paul, one of my favorite shortlist. One of those. Yeah. I know. I want to be introduced <laughs> the same way from moving forward. So, Paul, could you talk me through and everybody in the audience a little bit about the process you were undertaking for people to understand how you actually supported this testing? Right. Yes. Yeah, so sure. So as Phil says, I mean, it's not often our name is that helpful um, because sometimes people struggle to understand exactly what we do because we're we're kind of a hybrid of a consultancy agency and um, kind of tech support service business. Um, so I, I guess what, what Pete had already identified is that his in-house team were doing a phenomenal job on kind of the bottom of the funnel on search and kind of other aspects. Um, but there was a feeling in the business that actually there was more opportunity in that mid funnel to really drive um, kind of more effectiveness and to drive incremental value. And I think like I, I've always been um, a kind of big proponent of the fact that the most important role that a partner plays to a brand <laughs> when they're running media advertising is to prove the value and the effectiveness of it. But unfortunately, I think the industry has maybe got a little bit lost in its way to that sometimes. Um, and I saw a recent study actually this week from eMarketeer that after innovation, the second thing that clients said they were most, most concerned about during the pandemic, what had got worse with their agency relationships was the focus on marketing effectiveness and actually attributing value. Um, so that's, I guess that's where we came in. Um, Pete already had a very clear view of how would we want to run an experiment. So to really isolate a control group of people that are the same type of people we would want to target based on profile and propensity to want to click out to one of GoCompare's insurance partners, but one where we could actually isolate that we didn't want to serve advertising to them. So the, the, the beauty of AdForms platform is that there were so many different ways that we could tightly control that group. 
Whereas quite often, if you're working in walled gardens <laughs> that aren't so open and aren't so independent from a measurement perspective, you can't get down to that granularity that you really need. And like we, all, we always find that the best answers come from going deep and then coming back up with that insight and making sense of it. Um, so yeah, we, we essentially created a structure where we held out around 10% um, of the budget to target uh, to non go compare ads there was another partner from within the group that we used so we knew that the ads had nothing to do with driving car or home insurance we held that group out and then we tested a range of different things so we tested the targeting the recency the frequency to understand what was actually driving real conversion and we found that without giving too much away, we found that there was, a, there was a baseline noise that we needed to remove. And it was a significant noise, right? It was either people that had cookies on them that would have gone to go compare already, and our activity had nothing to do with it, or it was people that had seen heavy amounts of above the line TV, out of home, radio, and they had gone to the site. So we actually ended up removing around 60% of the baseline so that we were only looking at 40% of conversions in the exposed group. And even then, we saw that something like the people that were exposed were still 74% more likely to have responded. So I think what we proved is that we created a very robust experiment. And even with that robustness, we were able to show that there was a value. But the value, as the title of this uh, panel suggests, was not in the click, it wasn't in the people clicking. Uh, the value was in the people that, funnily enough, like offline advertising, saw an ad, and then after seeing several versions of a Go Compare ad online, actually went and did something about it. Fantastic. And that leads back to you, Peter, because sitting every day working, and I guess uh, you are CEO asking about your KPIs and how are we doing? <laughs> what did you go and show him after this one? Yeah, well, I think the... I think that the, I guess the point, the, the first thing was that there, the whole results are really, really encouraging for us, right? They, to what Paul was saying, it did help us uh, prove what we kind of expected anyway, which was there's value in the activity, but it's not equal. And the value obviously well, primarily sitting in, in impressions. Um, so that was great. Specifically, I think the really key thing is that one of our learnings was being able to, you know, take back and say, actually, the, the channel delivers value. So I think it was like, actually, slightly more, it was 38% was our incrementality set of incrementality for the channel um which is really great for us right there's a lot of nuances in there for different audiences that we had targeted as you'd expect but i think the, the primary thing that we're able to take back to the business was this is a great start it looks like as a channel it's a real opportunity for us to actually grow um and kind of like diversify our channel mix and actually deliver a little bit more against some of our kpis which of course is well primarily it's a you know the acquisition in this channel but it also does tie into our retention as well um when we when we integrate it with other channels so I think that was great. The second part that we were able to take back was around those um, targetable data points. That's the criteria that we can use um, to target, you know, well, effectively programmatically, right? The whole point of it. Um, and these were things like the, the length of the impression window. So I think it's up to around, you know, again, it, there's a bit of variance for different audiences, but towards 48 hours was sort of our sweet spot. Anything beyond that, we start to find actually is wasted inventory, right? Now that goes back to the incremental value. We don't need to spend it. We can pull it back. We invest it in the areas up until that point. Equally, the volume of impressions that varied again, depending on you know some broad audiences from anything like three to six around that kind of stuff. Again, within it in a certain time frame. So it just, I mean, those two alone immediately means that I can tell the business we have a set of criteria that we target, we report against, only those that meet that criteria are recorded as a sale. And naturally we're optimizing that against all our different, you know, CPA thresholds that we'll, we'll need to have in place. So, you know, that, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a very simple sort of, uh, or starting point. You know, we have other things that are factored into it that we learned around, uh, it's things that typically the, the color of creative, right? We have three sort of brand colors at the moment, green, orange, and pink. And uh, orange, sorry, not orange, got it wrong already. Uh, green. <laughs> <laughs> green was the color that resonates most with um uh those that convert so it just you know it we're layering in more and more uh sort of like say the criteria and insights that that to give us um that incremental uplift so i think yeah the the sort of the headline for us is like we have a channel that works for us where we believe we can grow it um but you know it's part of the journey uh that we need to continue going on really so very positive Fantastic. So, Phil, uh, maybe we can jump back to you. So, with the learnings uh, that 
you got out of this project with Pete and Paul. What kind of things are you now like changing the way you are selling into to other clients when you have that dialogue yeah. about KPIs and I, I think you know I think for anybody that's listening that's 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 come from a brand or an agency where they, they have an over reliance on paid search and, and and maybe do very limited amount in display they might do some basic retargeting or they might work with something like you know GDN or, or, or something like that. Uh, I think this this kind of validates uh, with a very mature, very well known brand that there is an, an approach that is you know very much led by the customer uh, with their brief, their detailed brief, but then a, t a technology uh, you know partner and and a sort of an agency hybrid partner working together, uh, and then, and it validates the need for a more omni channel approach. So I think. With more time and with more budget, we can prove even more. Um, we, we can be more creative on some of the use cases that we had. We can certainly look at various parts of the funnel. I think what excites me about this opportunity is, you know, go compare, do a huge amount of TV advertising, a little bit of radio advertising. These are two channels that are very much have exploded in the in the past 12 months, particularly CTV. And I think if we can tie that in and that branded advertising as part of this consumer journey, it gets re really exciting. And, and yeah, it's just developing that that that, that tri-party partnership uh, more. I think we all come actually from a paid search background. So we all know the value of a channel that's very ROI focused. And we know that if you can prove the value of it, then the CMO and the CEO, CEO usually finds more budget. So I think that's what's very interesting is we just keep pushing the value until we get kind of, you know, the, the full end-to-end -end strategy and approach. And Paul, the same question to you. Yeah, so I, I think the key here is, um, and, and Pete used the word several times, is incrementality, right? I mean, Go Compare is an advertiser that spends a lot of budget. So to, to carve off budget or add incremental budget, you need to know that it's going to do a, a task that isn't already being done. And it sounds like a very simple thing to say, but I think in far too many places, there is a reliance purely on last click attribution in the digital world. And then for traditional media, which is often very separate around econometrics and wh where, where we see the new world starting to settle is that you need some kind of media mix modeling, i.e. econometrics, but that only, and Pete and I talked about this, that, that, that only dips every so often. You can't do that every month. It's just far too heavy lifting. You don't have enough data points. So you do that once a year, maybe slightly more regularly if you're lucky, if you've got enough data. Um, and then on the other end, you've got kind of all your digital analytics. And then the piece that I don't think gets enough focus is just doing these experiments. Um, and like it isn't just in programmatic. You can do the same thing with paid social to see is there genuine uplift. Now, it's slightly more challenging when you try and do it in one of the walled gardens, because maybe the ability to really control and get the data out isn't quite there. But but it, but it's still possible. So. I would say the industry spends a lot of time talking about targeting and third party cookies going away and that being a real issue. And of course it is, but third party cookies going away is a real issue for measurement as well. And I think it gives the opportunity for us to rethink how do you build the right kind of measurement framework as Pete talked about where you get buy-in from the CEO down. And then, I mean, I see when Pete's team recommend things, they get backing from the CEO very quickly. Whereas in a lot of businesses, that isn't the case because there isn't a trust in the metrics. They're like, well, I don't really know that this is driving incremental revenue or customer net new customers. So therefore I'm going to hold back. Even if that's not said, there's that, that problem. And I think all agencies uh, or consultancies can help to do a better job on really proving the value rather than just constantly putting more money in and showing the total re results, actually getting into the finite detail around and the benefit of some of the, the channels that Pete, uh, sorry, Phil talked about going online, CTV, audio, digital out of home, is whilst they don't all behave in the same way that digital does, the fact that you can measure and layer those things on top means that running in a platform like Adform incrementally becomes more and more valuable to a brand, independent, the ability to isolate what works and then the ability to control data segments and pass it through with confidence that there isn't huge markup. I mean, to me, that feels like what the real new world should look like as opposed to the digital world of yesterday. 
Fantastic. No, totally agreed. Been sitting for 20 years as well, driving budgets. You need to, to test and be willing to take chances. Otherwise, you don't learn anything. So, Pete, I know you are definitely like thought leader and taking some good risk here. So your strategy, what would you say to the audience listening about how did you change your, the way you shape your strategy now for media? What I mean, I guess the, I mean, the big thing for us at the moment is it's, you know, the, the display channel is going to have a bigger role in our mix. Uh, you know, we're expecting to sort of scale it and sort of, you know, understand more and know a bit, right? But I think the thing was become evident, we're, you know, we're fairly confident there's a whole bucket load of stuff we still want to test and a whole lot of learnings that we want to find out. Um, so what tests are, are going next? Is it something you want to share? Yeah, or? Probably, you know, the things we... I mean, the, certainly the creative side is one that we want to look at. I think that we have a quite a definitive uh, and relatively long fun if you take it through to the very end of like renewal as well. Um, so the whole sort of sequential creative and like sort of actually really put in you know that uh, those messages in there that really re genuinely relate to the, that level of interaction they've had with the brand at that point. Uh, coupled though with the learnings we've got around the number of questions, the timings is where we'll see another sort of like step change of uplift. Um, I think there's other bits that are sort of partly uh, based with ourselves, which are integrating propensity models. So we've got levels of propensity models that tell us about those that would convert, quote, and, you know, click out and everything else. If we can integrate that into it, uh, we improve our efficiency and incremental value further, right? So the sort of, I guess, more data piece. And I think Phil's touching it. We're sort of, the whole connected TV is of interest. We do a lot of TV advertising. We want to probably explore to what extent display and TV work together, to what extent they can look at different audiences uh, and really looking at, you know, uh, I guess the, the overall sort of like broader kind of like uh, effectiveness of mix. And that is the case. We do have fortunately inside the support of a, an economic metric model, which helps us look at the effectiveness of the TV and the display and social and the PPC and everything else together. So it's, um, you know, I think it's probably worth also just probably stating the obvious thing, but also understanding sort of the multi-touch attribution there as well. Uh, again, just sort of really understand everything from the, our perspective of cost effectiveness through to actually tweaking and playing around with the messaging and the channel mix. We might we might find that we can pull channels out of a particular subset of a customer journey because there's no need for it. The uplift's already been provided. So it's just getting more granular with the data, to be honest. And that's, again, it's one of the reasons that we did like, you know, at form the, the data is so transparent to us uh, and the support Paul's guys have been to help us manipulate that basically. <laughs> Fantastic. And just to the audience, if you have any questions, you can you can push them now uh, and then I will see uh, if we have time for them. And if not, I will just continue to ask uh, my own questions. So feel free to ask some, some questions. But uh, Phil, what challenges do you see in the horizon and how do you see that the three of us or the like the three companies can tackle some of these challenges together? Yeah, so I, I, I was having to think about like sort of my answer on this and actually listening to the, everybody this morning, I think I would change it slightly to sort of talking about value exchange because that was mentioned a few times in, in a few of the, the chats already this morning. Um, how we can um, post death of the cookie, how we can post ISBA report on showing the advertising industry still very murky, get some trust back with, 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 uh, with our customers and say, hey, if you give us your data, we will give you X, Y, or Z. Then this can be logins. I mean, you know, for instance, on comparison sites, you, you, you log in to save your information when you put it in and so on. So there, there, there's, there's, there's a value exchange of a saved quote, but can we, do, can we do more with that so that we make sure people are comfortable with us continuing to use their data for what we want to use it for, which is just great advertising. You know, that's essentially what we're all, we've all set out to do. So under the value exchange, I think that includes how do we focus on, uh, you know, looking at uh, first party IDs versus third party cookies. It also includes better supply path optimization. So you know, Ollie's talking with, with the ISPA and the AOP guys tomorrow about, you know, a year on, has that really changed that much? And I think where we can all work together is, uh, you know, Go Compare are now, are now also owned by future publishers. So future and uh, you have a large publisher network and a large brand actually working really closely together. And I see that as the future with the tech partners and the consultancy companies kind of all, all working together and getting around the table for, for sort of better advertising effectiveness. So I think we have to start with value exchange. Fantastic. Phil, uh, Paul, sorry. Do you agree with Phil? I, I, I do. It's not often, but I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think what Phil said around the the many different kind of 
focuses that can really drive value out of this space are, mu are much needed. It, it, I think programmatic has a, attached some bad um, bad press over the years, and of course, something like the Isbar PwC report showed some positives, but also there were some headlines that maybe caught people's attention. And the like, and if you only superficially look at that, then that would be a concern. So. As Phil says, like supply kind of path optimization, lift testing, first party IDs, like there are so many things that actually can help you validate that the quality is good, that you're future proofed and that it's driving value. But it, it's about embracing them, whether you're an agency or consultancy or a brand, it's an agency or consultancy's job to encourage brands to engage with those things, because I think I mean, I saw Kieran O'Kane wrote a piece in Exchange Wire recently where he said programmatic maybe should be just be called programmable, which isn't massively different, but it does suggest it's just audiences bought through technology. And this programmatic world is almost like a legacy of where we used to be. Mm. Um, everything in a few years time is going to be bought in this same way. And that brings while it brings some challenges around the third party cooking or going away, I think it also allows us to almost draw a line and go, OK, post walking past this this point we need to do things differently from a targeting measurement you need to think about the customer on the end of receiving an ad and actually that we have used the data kind of meaningfully and respectfully but then where actually that data is used to deliver a better experience or streamline a customer finding what they want that's a that's a positive right so i, look, I I just think I just think we all know what needs to be done it's more about leaning in to where the technology exists or the, the, the kind of methodologies exist to actually do these things. And I just don't see enough of that. So I'd encourage everyone to kind of think about, are they doing enough to, to, to kind of really focus on that value exchange that Phil talked about? And I think we should give the last word to the client. Hmm. So <laughs> Peter, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you're, uh, you're, we only have one minute left, but your biggest challenge the next 12 months and how will you solve it in well, one minute? Is, yeah, <laughs> if we're keeping it to, I guess, the subject, I think Phil mentioned it, right? We, we're very lucky as, as an advertiser, we've got the future network to look at. So really we just want to apply the same level of rigor to our own platform. We're going to see how that performs. We have a belief that probably will require more than one platform to hit all our audiences in the most effective way. So the support I need from these guys is how we integrate that with our, our own, own offering effectively and we get the best out of it. And naturally all this is to the backdrop of the, the stuff that probably if you mentioned a number of times throughout this week, this you know, couple of days again, which is the whole privacy piece. And we're doing that correctly because it's not a bad thing if we're protecting privacy and delivering a good advertising service, right? Yeah, so. Definitely. Fantastic. Oh, I reckon that's 40 seconds. I reckon I may have wow. nailed that. <laughs>